Hi to the Ho Drink Arenos. Welcome to the lucky 13th episode of the Idaho Booze Podcast with me, Steve Koontz. We are keeping things light and breezy today with our guest, Meriwether Cider's own Molly Ledbetter. We talk all things cider, the fun way we met, and how Meriwether continues to put out one amazing cider after another. She also gives us the scoop on this year's second annual Idaho Cider Fest going on next weekend and we play a game of apples or pears all that and more coming up on this week's episode of the idaho booze podcast this show is sponsored by boise beer buddies when me and my friends are chopping it up at the local watering hole say good apple tap house or twin falls sandwich company bert's growler garage i'm always watching the bar to see what people are ordering And if they are carrying that Boise Beer Buddies card. Because if you do frequent pretty much any craft beer bar or brewery in or around Idaho and you aren't using your Beer Buddies card, well, we can't be friends. The Beer Buddies card doesn't just unlock amazing deals like $1 off your first beer at Burt's, 20% off your entire bill at Twin Falls Sandwich Company, or BOGO Tuesdays at Boise Brewing. It also unlocks an entire world of craft beerdom with the Boise Beer Buddies app by showing you other bars, restaurants, and breweries where you can be saving money and making new friends like me. Let's face it, you're already buying beer. Now be a buddy. Get your Boise Beer Buddies membership today at boisebeerbuddies.com and as a special treat, use promo code BOOZEPOD, all one word, BOOZEPOD, and get a free year-long membership when you purchase one. That's promo code BOOZEPOD for buy one, get one free Boise Beer Buddy card. Be a buddy. Sign up for Boise Beer Buddies today. Welcome back to the Idaho Booze Podcast. I'm Steve Koontz here with Molly Ledbetter from Merriweather Cider Company, Cider House? Sure. Merriweather Ciders. <laughs> and we, uh, we are here at the top floor of the lovely downtown Cider House. Very nice up here. Very, I love all the wood. I like all the... Very woody. It, it looks, yeah, it looks cut. Like, what is that? A custom table, I guess? Uh, I think is everything my sister custom? made that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these ones, That's actually, like oh my gosh, change. these, um, these, this bench actually mm-hmm. was made from the pallet that one of our fermenters came in there you go. when we first started. Yeah, it's very cool. Like, yeah. I like the block seats. I just think it's really neat. It's nice up here. And, yeah. and I don't think that I've ever been up here before, oh, yeah. which is weird because I've been here a million yeah. times. So, here we are up in the cider house. Uh, I'm here with Molly. And I was just going to ask her, I, I was just trying to remember the first time we met. I think we've known each other for maybe eight years, nine years. Yeah, like probably that. from the very beginning of Merriweather, I yeah. guess. Yeah. When did you guys start? Uh, we opened our doors, like our, our grand opening for the tap room was uh, February 2016. Um, but you know, we were working on it for a year before that. Um, we were in the farmer's market and that sort of like little stuff, but so I feel like we were gearing up for something. I think it was maybe American Craft Beer Week, or I can't oh, remember yeah, what it was. Yeah, we did do that. That and was one of the festivals we did before we opened. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So I think I had met your sister and I met your dad at like a farmer's market or something, yeah. and um. Rick Tooley, uh, RIP, dearly departed Rick Tooley, he invited everyone to Burgers and Brew for like a summit, and it was the weirdest thing. And I think um, I was like, okay, I knew a lot of beer people were, I didn't know who you were, and you said something to the effect of, well, why the fuck are we sitting here? We're here to fucking sell shit, right? And I, and I said, now who is that? <laughs> that is someone I want to know. I, oh, I don't know if that's exactly what you said. I do that know that the F word was sprinkled in there liberally, which I appreciate it because I am also a liberal user of the F word. No. And uh, I said, now who is that? And <laughs> someone sitting next to me said, oh, that's Kate's, that's Kate's sister, Molly, over at yeah. Merriweather. And I said, oh, well, this is someone I need to know. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it sounds like something I would say, but I don't know. I don't remember that at all. I was um, summer 2015, which was the the year we were kind of working on it. Um, I wasn't as involved because I was still in my last year of fighting fire. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I mean, I could have been back. And if I was in fire, I definitely had a much dirtier mouth than I do now. It was awesome. So that feels right. (laughs) It was was appreciated. And it was uh, in that room, very well received. No worries there. And we were, that was a, that's a pretty tough room to be sort of a new person in. So what was that like when you guys first started being sort of the new kids on the I, block? Right, literally like two years or maybe one or two years after a bunch of breweries started, yeah. then you guys came along. What was that like? 
Um, I have never had a hard time with the brewery. Like breweries have always been so incredibly lovely uh, and wineries. Um, the whole craft beverage industry, um, I have had the loveliest experience was with. Um, when we first started, I had no experience in the craft beverage industry. I had no experience in sales in business, in anything. I mean, like I said, I was a wildland firefighter. (laughs) So I was a ditch digger. Um, And so we leaned really heavily on that community and everyone was just absolutely lovely. I've never owned a business in another city, but I imagine it's a lot harder to do because there isn't that like collaboration over competition and this um, real just warmness and willingness to help people start up and make their dreams come true and join that community and i've just i i think it's to this day still the case and i still really appreciate it and i try to pass it along to everybody i can now that we're more established because it really is just such a lovely community and as someone that was a member of the community and that when you came in i was really excited (laughs) because we had had a couple other and i'll talk about later but we had a couple other cideries that were here and whatever and they were fine but like what you guys were promising to do and what you had done, and I had gotten some of your stuff on purpose at the farmer's markets and at some of the other places where you were kind of testing some things out, right? And I'd gotten to know your dad a little bit and I was really just excited about what you guys were gonna do. And I think it was the, the Blackberry boom <laughs> that, and it's no secret, and I think you know this, anyone should know that it's literally like, Probably my top five beverage <laughs> that's been made here I know, in Idaho. I know. So it your heart. That it does. It still breaks my heart. <laughs> we'll get to that later. Uh, actually, now that's that's pretty much all I say about it. But um, Blackberry Boom was, I think, when you guys came up with that, I was like, just whatever you guys make, I'm in. I'm in on it. And I think a lot of other people were like that too. So that must have been nice to come in and have already have some pretty good buzz um, coming from some of those farmers markets and stuff like that to be able to come in and then open the cidery up and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, we ran a Kickstarter in March of 2015. So that was, um, I wouldn't necessarily, we we got it. It it succeeded, but it was a ton of work. Um, Sure. And I wouldn't necessarily like recommend to new people that to do it for financial gains. But I think the um, kind of buzz and marketing we got out of it was probably worth it just to, to get our name out there a little bit. And then the farmer's markets and um, I, I think we had a little easier of a job than any new brewery does because we were, um, and kind of still are, I'm shocked there's not more cider in Boise. I don't know where everyone's at. Um, but <laughs> uh, we were a new entity. You know, Sounds we were like a, a new, we were, absolutely, I would, love, I would love more cider to come to Boise. I think we're not at capacity remotely. Um, but I would love to, you know, we we were a new entity. We were something different. Um, and so I think that helped a lot with the buzz and getting our name out there, which has always been really nice, especially because we truly didn't know what we were doing. So <laughs> we were just going out and talking so, to as many people as possible. I look at it like this. Like you, you, yeah, you were a new thing, but you, you very much attacked it. Like cider, cider is kind of weird because it's sort of in between two worlds, right? So a lot of people that go to, maybe like if I take my wife to 10 Barrel across the street Mm -hmm. and they don't have, um, they don't have, she doesn't drink beer. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have a wine that she likes, now they, I think they do. But if they don't, let's say they don't. Um, They might have a Meriwether, or if we go to Good Apple Tap House or Mm -hmm. something like that, they might have a Meriwether cider on tap that she'll be like, okay, cool, I'll do that instead. Yeah. But cider is much more sort of in the wine world than it is in the beer world, isn't it? Uh, can you kind of explain yeah, how that works I, and, you know, why that's... I kind of like put... <laughs> this is um, this is like my own little... I kind of put cider into two categories. So I think of it as like cider beer and cider wine. So mm-hmm. um, cider wine is these very boutique cideries that have their own orchards and are crushing and pressing very specific apple varieties and there's cider apples and there's dessert apples and so these cider apples that have a lot more tannin to them and they're putting them in 750 ml bottles they might be still um and you're drinking and they're like eight percent and you're drinking them in wine glasses and small pours just like wine um and they, you know they're selling for 20 30 dollars a bottle mm-hmm. um and then there's like the beer cider side which is cider that's carbonated has fun flavors is poured in out of kegs comes in glasses um and that's where we we sit Mm -hmm. Um, we definitely are more on that beer cider side 
Um, so, you know, we, we go to the beer festivals. We have um, taps at a lot of different restaurants and bars. Um, and so I would say definitely, like, I always tell people cider is, um, at least our cider is made like wine, drink like beer. Um, but definitely, I think that um, there's, it, it does it does bridge that gap between um, the wine drinkers because a lot of there's always like a drier um, cider that wine drinkers might be more um, drawn to and then we've got like a hop cider or even those bigger fuller flavored ciders for the beer drinkers that are looking for something a little more with like a little more oomph um, so it does I think we've got a variety enough and enough um, innovation in our flavors that we can draw people from all sides of the aisle instead of just like, oh yeah, if you're a wine drinker, you like cider, but if you're a beer drinker, you don't. I think that um, cider is diverse enough to be able to pull people from every every walk. I always tell people that say they don't like cider. I say, you haven't had a cider you like yet. That's <laughs> because, good. That's <laughs> a great it's line. It's just, it's so, it's so vast. It really is. And I mean, just, I mean, we can get into it a little bit and then I kind of want to circle back and talk about how you guys started. But it's one of those things where very literally wherever the apples come from, you could have the same apple from two different regions and it'll be different, right? Like, yeah, yeah, the terroir of it. <laughs> That's a wine word. Terroir. Terroir. That's um, a good wine word. It is a good wine word. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um and that's a lot, uh, and apples can be so crazy. I mean, there's 4,500 um, named varieties of apples just in the U.S., like just absolutely insane amounts of apples. Yeah. Um, and it, and definitely if you're orcharding and you've got all these very specialty cider apples, um, you're going to make them almost like wines, right? So like in wine, you'll be like, oh, this is a blend of Merlot and Cabernet um, grapes. And in cider, you can do the same thing. So you can say like, oh, this is a blend of Kingston Splacks and Fox Whelp or all sorts of different ones. Um, we don't have the, um, we don't have the ability to get those apples. They're just there. We don't have our own orchard and the, that apple juice, um, or pressing facilities. Um, but that apple juice is much more expensive and it just kind of is price prohibitive for us right now. Yeah. Um, so we get our apples from or our juice from a processing facility in Washington that sourced their apples from Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. Um, right. And they they keep it. So we tell them that it's a blend of five different dessert apples. So those are apples that you would buy in like the grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, we tell them the pH that we want it to come at. And then they combine the apples in certain ways to make that juice have that pH. And then we get it within two days of pressing. Oh, wow. um, it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's incredible. Um mm -hmm. and they store it all year round so we can get fresh juice year round that's fresh pressed. Okay. Um but that's a much more consistent juice. So we're not seeing as much variety like as much um change in our recipes as a lot of is people that are that are using the the smaller orchard with the more heritage apples. Um that being said, we definitely I mean, we use a lot of fresh fruit as well. The apples our juice definitely can change slightly and then also you know we we use apricot and we use black currant and we use all these things and um year over year we do have some very we always have to be like tasting it and tweaking the recipes every sure. year because agricultural products they're going to be different every they year change. yep that's interesting because you say you know you get all the juice from washington and it comes in i guess in a giant vat or something um, have you seen the truck. milk milk yeah, trucks yeah. that are on the interstate? That I mean, it's not the milk truck, but it's those exact same tankers. It's not the milk truck. But no, it's, it's the same. It's the exact same style truck. They just don't. They it. don't put like milk and juice okay, in the same I truck. I'm thinking I was just um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, it, it comes in that. It's a uh, 5,500 gallons at a time. It's a lot of gallons. It is. <laughs> so let's go back and let's let's talk about the beginnings of Meriwether. Tell us about you know how your family got started making cider. And, you know, why you guys chose to start the business. Yeah. Um, so we were, at the time, um, my sister and I were working for the Forest Service for as wildland firefighters um, and just seasonal workers kind of needing to, like, make some decisions on that. You know, do we, need, do we take permanent jobs there? Do we move on? Do we go to grad school? What do we do? Um, and then my parents were um, university professors and... 
they were looking to retire. So we were all kind of at this crossroads together to be able to do something new. Um, my dad had been an avid home brewer since college. He started making wine and then he started like growing grapes to make his own wine. Um, and then he started making cider and having like these big parties at my parents' house to like, and people would have to like blind taste test and like write their notes out. You know, he's very yeah. sciencey. God, I would love <laughs> um, to go to yeah. those parties. <laughs> um, so we knew he had a good product. Um, and my parents did a sabbatical in Australia, and we're seeing a lot more cider there because it's um, a Commonwealth country, so there's a lot more um, British influence in Australia, so there's a yeah. lot more um, cider available there. And she okay. saw it, and she said, you know what? This is it. Like, this is what's growing in the U.S. There isn't anything in Boise right now. I think we could be the first ones to open a cider place. We know we can make a good product. Everything else, you know, we can we can figure out. We're yeah. smart. <laughs> We're Obviously, determined. Super smart. Um, We're on sabbatical in Australia. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's a smart um, sentence right there. So, yeah, they just, uh, we, it kind of just like, we take like a cider class and then we would get our, you know, apply for a trademark, you know, the name and whatever. And then all of a sudden it like was just um, snowballing into like owning a business, which is pretty wild. Um, mm. But it's been, it's been great. And where does the name Meriwether come from? So it's from Meriwether Lewis, um, from the Lewis and Clark Expeditions. Um, we are distant, re- distantly related to him on my mom's side. I was going to say, um, there's a little bit and of then resemblance. He is, <laughs> yeah, I look like an explorer, an 18th century explorer. <laughs> um, he crossed... And he also, they were the first explorers to cross the continental divide into Idaho. So we thought it was a really cool like um, coming together of family and place. Okay, cool. I never knew that. That's yeah, awesome. There you go. So do you remember your original releases? Um, yes. Yeah, so we, we still have most of them, actually. So the Foothill Semi-Dry, the Strong Arm Semi-Sweet, the Ginger Root. Um, we don't have Blackberry Boom anymore. I know that breaks your heart. But we do have Black Current Crush, which, in my opinion, is actually better. Mm-hmm. Um, we had to stop making Blackberry three years ago because, um, or four years ago now, um, there was this huge heat wave in the Pacific Northwest and it killed all the blackberries. Oh. So we couldn't get blackberry juice. So we oh. switched to black currant and now we're just kind of um, committed to black currant. <laughs> it's just um, one of those things where I love blackberry boo. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure other people out there do as well. But I've had the black currant and it's also very good. So I'm not I'm not a current hater. Yeah. I am uh, I'll change with the times. I'll yeah. get with it. <laughs> um, and then I think we also had Cherry Time Bomb when we first opened. Um, and that one is st- we still produce but it's a seasonal. Seasonal, right? Uh-huh. So yeah. I think those are the five that we um we launched with. I don't we might have had Hop Shot too actually. Um so yeah, at some point, yeah. we have not um dropped really anything that we we started with. We we've kept with the ogs but we have a huge variety of seasonals now Mm -hmm. um we come out with one seasonal every the first like the beginning of every month we have a a different seasonal that we drop um we always have a barrel aged on and then we always just have like a bunch of fun stuff that we're like messing with um we make a a cider for um idaho shakespeare fest every year this this year's was mid cider night stream it was a passion fruit elderberry and lime cider um, we made a raspberry rhubarb with Idaho Botanical Gardens that was made with their rhubarb. Um, so we, we just, we always have so many ciders. Yeah. <laughs> More than we usually have taps for. That's so awesome that's that you're able to kind of work with like the Idaho Shakespeare Festival and the Botanical Gardens yeah. and do stuff like that. That's a really cool thing. I noticed that, uh, I don't know, two or three years ago when I was at the Shakespeare Fest. I was like, hey, look, they're yeah. doing one for this too. And yeah. And it's always fantastic. a punny name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> funny that's good yeah there i mean that'd be fun to just come up with those names like i think that'd be a lot of fun to please do if, if you have good ideas it's hey, always a little hard don't, don't tempt me i'll spend <laughs> the whole afternoon i'll tell you i'll you'll tell you the get, next the next you'll place just get this emails next, this next season i'll tell you what the plays are you you'll just get emails from me it. perfect be like boop, 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 i love boop, it boop, uh just off the top of my head uh <laughs> you know, little shop of terrors <laughs> Yeah, you want to hear my favorite one that we ever did for Go Shakespeare? Yeah. So it was when they were doing Caesar, and we named it, we had a brute cider, and we named it Et Tu Brute. And very that's nice. like my very favorite. Very nice. <laughs> I'm still very proud of that. It was doesn't like, get that much was like, better that. That was like that. six years ago, and I still haven't, lo- I, I still haven't gotten over it. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> and as I think of them, I'm just going to, I'll Perfect. just keep thinking Send about them. it. Everything else with the interview right here is pretty easy. This all kind of just happens. So I will think of uh, apple puns for Shakespeare. I love that's it. what I'm all about. So cider is 
uh, maybe unfortunately for you, it's taxed like wine, right? Um, at a certain um, percentage. So it's okay. taxed more than beer, but right. it is taxed a lot lower if it's under 7%, a lot higher if it's over 7%. Now, how does that affect pricing? And would it be more beneficial to Meriwether to be taxed like a brewery? Um, yeah, <laughs> I would love to be taxed <laughs> like a brewery. Um, that's a big reason why we don't have a lot of um, ciders that are over 7% um, because they are more expensive. Our barrel they aged are. Right? What, they do. What's the, what's the percentage oh, God, you're gonna, for? Um, so anything over 7%. So we are barrel aged um, and our uncharted, which is our, our imperial apple, um, are both um, taxed at a higher percentage. But... Um, everything else isn't so we kind of just we don't really change the the barrel age we sell at a more premium price but that's from sure the taxes but also you it's know the, the amount of time and effort yeah. it takes to make them um the uncharted we just kind of um subsidize it with some of our other sure. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah so it's just it is really and it's a state thing. It's a state tax, right? It's not a national um, tax. No, that's a federal TTV tax. Federal we, TTV? We, I mean, we pay state taxes, too. State we, tax we, tell, it, we pay like everybody. 30%, everybody gets. It's like 30% or 30 cents a gallon or something uh, insane like that. So, yeah, I think what we're trying to say here is, come on, everybody. Yeah. Let's get cider their own tax bracket. Yeah. They shouldn't, you shouldn't have to pay as much as wine. You're not charging no. $30 a gallon. No, we're, again, we're selling it. Like beer. In kegs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in kegs. <laughs> yeah, totally. All right. We're well, just trying to get the word out there that maybe because some people it. will look at like a four pack of cider and they'll and see like, it'll be like yeah, 16, like, 17 why bucks. Why is it so expensive? Exactly. Yeah. And it's supposed to be drank like a beer. You know, you said yeah. that before. So I think it, I've always thought that it's unfair that cider yeah. is you're in the wine commission, right? You're part of the mm-hmm. wine commission. You should be with the with IBU. You should be over with us. Or oh. if you had your own I love people, the Idaho Wine Commission, though. Yeah. <laughs> I love they them. Really and they nice. have been absolutely lovely. I think that we kind of got thrown in their laps. Um, and no they, shot at the Idaho Wine Commission. They're friends of the show, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Ashley, <laughs> everyone over there, awesome people. But uh, I'm just saying, I don't know that cider should be taxed like wine. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that that's um, one of the the harder parts. Well, and, and cider is just more expensive to produce, right? Like the base of beer is water. The base of cider is amongst other things. Well, but <laughs> the base of our our base is juice, Apple juice. Yeah. which is a lot more per gallon than water. Yeah, and you water. can't just dump like treetop in there. I mean, no, you gotta go you gotta buy, buy the fifty five gallon milk trucks. Fifty five hundred. <laughs> fifty five hundred. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 55 gallons not going to do it. No, that would not do much at all. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's a it's a more expensive product to produce and then also gets taxed higher. So let's go, Idaho. Yeah. Give our people at Merriweather a break on the cider. And our other, other cideries that have popped up, there have been some other yeah. Idaho-based cideries there that have are. popped up. There's one in Victor. Yep. Um, I'm not sure. Is that the only other one? No, right? so High Point Cider in Victor. High Point. Um, Cedar Draw Cider in Buell. Okay. And then Stack Rock Cider in Caldwell. They're part of Peaceful Valley Farms. Oh, okay. So they have a, if you haven't been out there, it's so beautiful. How there. beautiful is that place? Oh, it's, it's gorgeous. You can see the Oahis. They've got this beautiful, like, tap room and restaurant where you can get, like, farm fresh yeah. dinner. Oh, I've my gosh. bought food from it Peaceful is Valley. So good. It is really good. Um, yeah. And uh, I think there's a brand new one. Um, oh, no. Now I'm going to forget their name. They're in um, Rathdrum. Idaho. Oh boy. Um, no, don't worry about that. That's up there. It's way up there. Uh, oh no, now I'm forgetting his, the name. It's something else point. Ah, anyway. There's, there's that, a couple. They're po- they're popping up. Um, that Raftrum? <laughs> Meriwether doesn't even remember know. your name. Now I want to look them up. I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys, Molly, are known for your kind of fun and flashy flavors. Like you talked about the Cherry Time Bomb. Yeah. I've talked about the Blackberry Boom, sort of a lot. Uh, where did the inspiration come from for these flavors? And, you know, what's coming next? Um, so they, everybody kind of can contribute to flavor um, ideas. So they come from everywhere. We have um, the Flavor Bible, which is this big book that if you, you're like, you know what, I want to make a cider with apricot. And you look up apricot and it'll say what complimentary flavors are apricot. Flavor Bible? Did Gig put that together? No, no, it's a book. Oh, okay. You can buy it at the bookstore. Yeah. Okay. Um, I didn't know there was such a thing yeah, as a flavor it's, Bible. It's very cool. cool. Um, so that's a lot of them. We were kind of like, okay, we want to do, um, you know, if you if you know a flavor you want to do, then you can find something that, that adds to it. So for the apricot, for example, um, we do an apricot sage, and the sage really adds this kind of savory um, earthy notes to the apricots, which are nice mm-hmm. and tart and juicy. 
Um, so that that's a lot of them. And then other than that, it's just like people being like, hey, like this would be such a great one. Like this is what I would really love. Like last year, um, my head cider maker, Justin, came up with um, gingerbread cookie as our um, oh, holiday perfect. seasonal. And it was so good. Um, and, you know, he was just like, okay, I'm going to make a cider that tastes like a gingerbread cookie. And they just, yeah. like, tinkered with it until they got it. So, and that's the cool thing about cider, right? Like, the sky's the limit on what you can do to flavor it, to make it different, to yeah. make it um, fun and really anything. I mean, beer I, beer and wine, I don't feel like have the same amount of, like, innovation or, like, freedom as we do. Um, beer, you know, you have to, you can add some fun things to it, but you're always, you're going to be brewing it and it's going to taste it's not going to have the same kind of like amount that I'd we can put I'd in. I refer you to the brewery in Meridian. They have some pretty crazy flavors. They do. There, I, yeah. Yeah. No, and you're I'm right. Not, and I'm not I saying that they, saying. they can't do a lot. Of, but like, I think that we're able to add a lot of things post fermentation. Sure. We have a cider base and then we can add a lot of flavors to that to create these like really, um, really well defined. Like this is what it tastes like. Whereas yeah. beer is a lot of like that ferment- fermentation changes flavors a lot. So you get a lot sure. of different things. Um, and I think wine is such an established, such a, um, prestigious, <laughs> um, industry that it's really hard to, to add to, things to it I mean, without, we have, we have without guys like Jen. No, yeah, we, we are downtown yeah. and engine five's going somewhere. Engine five is going to go take <laughs> care of some business. Um, but no, we have, well, we have guys like Jed over at split yes. rail who kind of, um, go against that a little bit. Very, and, totally. And, and I, there's and a lot I of, love I think that. there's room for, for, you know, innovation. Always. Yeah, totally. And you guys, so with some of your ciders, so you have like the, like you just talked about the apricot one, you have the cherry time bomb. Mm-hmm. So are these, these are all apple based, right? They're not cherry or so cider base. has to be at least 51% oh, okay. percent apple, um, fermented apple to be considered cider. Okay. If it's anything more, then it would just be a um, wine of another fruit is what it would be called. There's a fancy word for it. It's called a... Yeah, there's. I know plum's got a fancy word. Yeah, there's a fancy know. word. Yeah. Um, but no, so all of our ciders are the same cider base. Mm-hmm. So that 5,500 gallon, we, we ferment all the way down to 0% sugars. And then from there, we... Um, we put it into our blending tanks and we add all of the That's flavors that we want to, to add. Um, all of our flavors are always whole, full ingredients. So if we say it's apricot sage, it's got apricots and it's got sage in it. We don't add any artificial flavors, any artificial colors ever. You guys are big on that, right? Uh, very big on that. I'm very, no. very, very strict about it. Uh, once a year, you guys do a huckleberry, yes. right? Now, how... Oh my gosh, it's coming out next week. How many... You heard it here first. Kegs, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> how many kegs... We'll see when this airs. Yeah. <laughs> um, how many kegs are you able... How many huckleberries are you able to procure? And how many kegs of cider are you able to get from set Um. So, this year... So, we always do a program um, to collect huckleberries. So, if you bring us a pound of huckleberries you get a free 500 ml bottle of the huckleberry cider once oh, we make it the only that. way you can get a bottle is to donate huckleberries we don't we don't package it for anybody else wow. um so this year we got 47 pounds of huckleberries no. and we were able to make 40 gallons of huckleberry um so we will have two kegs things. at both both locate two One half keg. barrels oh, two at okay. One tap barrel at each location, and then a six barrel at the tap room, and then I'm actually saving one of the six barrels for the cider fest. <laughs> nice. Oh, it'll yeah. be at the cider fest. Yeah, just a six barrel. It won't last very long. Oh. It's more of just like a because I and think it's cool that it'll actually. <laughs> how much is it going to cost per glass for a glass of alcohol? Um, I think we do eight dollars for a thirteen ounce pour. Oh, I thought it, okay, yeah. that's not a bad deal. No, that's a really good deal. No, it's a it's a labor of love. It's and it's not, a beautiful. It's, like, it's not supposed to blue, be blue purple blue yeah. color, right? Yeah, yeah, it's. I mean, it's whole huckleberries. We we um we collect them and we process them ourselves and then add them into the cider yeah so it's it's a great one it's we call it like our black friday is like the day we release the huckleberry people got really excited it goes really really fast and then it's done because there's no um processing facility there's nowhere you can get real huckleberries um so we can't make it the rest of the year because we don't we we refuse to use anything that's not real real fruits um so we do it when during huckleberry season and then it's just this like celebration of the fruit celebration of the season and then it's gone and then you have to wait for next year. Yeah. Unless you bring us huckleberries, then you get a bottle. Then you, you get a can bottle. You keep as long as you want. As long as you want. <laughs> 
That's fantastic. Um, so, West Coast Cideries. We had, there was a cider, there was a cidery in here, a representative from a cidery in here right before I got yeah. here. And so these guys, uh, especially this the Washington, Oregon uh, people, they tend to do three different. They just put out basically three ciders to start out. At least the ones I've seen. Them. There's some other ones that are kind of outliers that do their own thing. But mostly you see it's like semi sweet dry and then imperial right and i just saw you guys do have an imperial now mm-hmm. um, uncharted i think yeah. is what it's called but before when you started you didn't have you really didn't have that you did have a no. semi-sweet and semi-dry i guess mm-hmm. but how did you guys sort of like uh get around doing that imperial or doing but you guys did like I, like like i was trying to say before like you guys did really fun flavors yeah. instead of just like those cideries like the guy that was just here they just do it's semi-sweet, semi-dry, imperial. You guys didn't do um, any of those. I mean, you did the first two, but not really the yeah, third one. So uh, how- I think that, I, I don't know if I agree with that. I think that there's a lot of cideries um, that are coming out with a lot of really fun flavors, a lot of fruit forward ones. Coming out now, but they didn't start with those. Um, Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what they started with. Um, I'll tell we you. did start. Semi-dry, <laughs> semi-sweet. <laughs> um, the imperial th- uh, craze has kind of just started in the last couple years. Um, there weren't as many Imperials um, as commonly on the market as they are now. Um, mm-hmm. We decided to do an Imperial. It was kind of a... Um, love the name, love the bottle, love the can. Thank Looks you. Great. Yeah, well, we just changed all our cans. Um, I saw that. Yeah, I haven't asked a lot. It was, <laughs> it was a compromise between me and uh, my head cider maker, Justin, because I made him make a N.A. cider. <laughs> Otherwise known um, as? A non-alcoholic cider Apple called juice. Wild Abandon. <laughs> um, it's got hibiscus, rose hip, juniper, and lime, and it is lovely. Um, and I made him do it, and he was so sad. <laughs> Sorry, Justin. Um, yeah. <laughs> so as a compromise, I was like, listen, if you make Wild Abandon, then you can make an Imperial <laughs> that we can have year-round. So that's where um, Uncharted came from. He, um, it's Justin's baby. He loved, it's, it's so good. It's actually, so it's an Imperial, it's eight and a half percent, just apple, but we add a little oak tannin to it, oh. um, to give it a little heft, give it a little, um, tannic body, give it mm-hmm. a little more, um, complexity. Yeah. So it's actually a super beautiful cider. You absolutely do not feel like it's eight and a half percent. Um, yeah, those are the ones that I don't like. It'll I, sneak up on the, you. The ones that are like <laughs> so nine, nine percent. Where, and I have a spidey sense anyway for that, just from being in the beer business for so long. Uh, I I just, my the hairs on the back of my neck stand up anytime I get anywhere near 9%. Mm-hmm. And some of those Imperial ciders are just too much. Like, it's yeah. just too much too much booze. Yeah, so it I'll, like have to you guys you, I'll have, have to give you a taste of it. Yeah, we'll it's, um, it, it's, it's dangerous. I'm excited. I'm excited <laughs> I would never, I, if I tried it, I wouldn't be like, oh gosh, that's a, that's a hefty beer cider. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, oh, it's... Like it's good. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. fine. Mo- um, You've heard it here first. Molly so, can put down Uncharted I, like nobody's I business. I don't know if I do. I, I, I avoid it just because I'm such a pansy. The uh, the, uh, the NA one, I can put that one down. Yeah. I, really believe. I, <laughs> I drink a lot of those. I can drink apple juice. Yeah. I'm good at it. So you guys switched. You guys were in 22 ounce bottles for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then you just recently, um, I don't know, within the last year or two, switched to cans pretty um, much all the way through. You do have some like little stubby bottles I saw. Uh, yeah, so we did 22s for the first couple years. Um, and then we bought our own canning line and switched to 500 mils. Um, we were in 500 mils for about three or four years. Um, and then last year? Yeah, about a year and a half ago, we bought um, a canning line. Um, so we switched all of our um, flagship ciders. So, our so you, had a, bottling, dry, the you had a bottling line and you did 500 mils in there. Yes. And now you have a canning now line. Now we have a canning line and, and a bottling line. Yeah, both. Yeah. yeah. You don't get to get rid of, you don't get to trade the bottling no, line into no, the canning line, do you? you cannot. I think the payments also still go on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you guys now have beautiful 16 ounce cans. I saw down there. Yeah. Do you have, are you also doing 12 ounce cans or just the uh, We do our um, Mary Spritzers in in 12 ounce cans so those mary are, spritzers so that's like i i tell people it's meriwether's um answer to the white claw because sure. the people deserve better oh, oh <laughs> um, wow. that's fire so it's like it's only 4.6 wow whoa i don't know if you can hear that but there is some major thunder out there we're getting some weather today, oh that's folks. Ex- I, uh, it's kind of nice to get rain hopefully not too much lightning yeah um yeah, but uh 
So it's only 4.6%. It's apple based. It's got, but it's got um, sparkling water in it as well to just make it lighter, brighter. Um, right now, mm -hmm. our spritzer is the raspberry. So it's a raspberry spritzer. Um, super easy drinking. It's like my park beer. It's nice. like my park cider. I love it. Um, and so that one's in 12 ounce, but everything, all of our flagships are in 16 ounce. Um, and then all of our seasonals, the ones that we come out with monthly and our barrel aged are still in those 500 mil bottles. Okay. And those cans are looking really nice. I gotta tell you, I saw them just Yay. now. Yeah. Downstairs. We just did that this year. We, looking uh, really good. We, we switched from the labeled, um, labeled brights to printed cans. Oh, um, wow. That's and a big they're step. beautiful. And we rebranded them completely. Yeah, they're really beautiful. I'm really excited about them. They are really nice. Thank nice you. job on those. They Thank look you. Really cool. And um, as I've said before on this show, I am, and to anyone that'll listen really anywhere, <laughs> I am a big uh, brand guy. Yeah. That's my thing. I love art. I love branding. I love all that stuff. So I'm really drawn to those cans. I think they look awesome. I'm excited to uh, to take some of those home yeah. on my way out. And, uh, you know, I'm just really excited for you guys, you know, as you kind of move into this new thing, 16 ounce cans are really cool. Have you given any thought? A lot of breweries are doing 19.2 cans. Um, um, I don't know if your canner can do that or not, but if no, you do, it can't. I don't think I don't think it can. 19.2s um, are mostly C store cans. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do singles in the C stores, um, we are not in any C stores. So I think we would have to kind of try to. Um, we'd have to break into the convenience stores with our 16s just to see how sales were before we ever made like a commitment enough to do like a 19.2 you'd think though but with that 19.2 it's a whole different audience yeah. a whole different crowd yeah i don't know not I'm yet uncharted not 19.2s yet. oh god <laughs> uh, well we talked to uh, some other some breweries and stuff and they they found it they have the more octane they put into the 19.2s the yeah that's, that's the, the that's the vibe oh, that's boy. the vibe that's and that's a that is a vibe yeah, <laughs> that put me on my butt. So Meriwether, I'm um, happy to say, has outlasted a couple, like I were, we were talking about before. You've outlasted at least one cidery that I can think of, yeah, the maybe first... two in Idaho. So, um, you know, why do you think it's gone so well for you guys? And what, what do you think you guys have done differently than what maybe um, they were doing? I think at least one of the cideries, um, his plan was always to sell it. Um, so he followed through this plan. Um, it got sold to somewhere in Washington and then they decided they, so they opened a tap room in Washington and then they had a tap room here for a little while longer. And then they decided that was like too many logistics. So they closed it down. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as I know, they still exist. I'm not sure <laughs> in Washington. I, I don't know um, but I think that, um, we, we've created a community. We've been really a part of the community. We've, we've um try to enmesh ourselves in and become part of people's lives here this is where we live this is what mm -hmm. we want to serve this community we want to serve we um we do a lot of things with nonprofits. we do a lot of events we we try to be out in the community and that um in turn put makes people feel really close to us um which i think really helps your brand because um when people feel like when people care about you that's that's when you succeed right i mean sure. so there's that there's no um better example than during 2020 when we were closed um i was getting mess so many messages every day of just people being like what do we do like how do we make sure you're okay like what are your what are the options to support you during this i know you guys are closed what can like wh where do i go what do i buy to make sure that you make it through because you matter to me um wow. and it was just so beautiful and it was um it just made me realize like that we are important to this community and I and, and that's just like so heartwarming and I just for sure uh, makes me kind of want to cry so and, well let's not do that quite yet uh, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I am speaking of events and stuff like that you do have the second annual I believe uh, Meriwether Cider Fest coming up yes. now last year was a pretty darn good time it was out here I think Freak Alley and yeah. right around here so what's the difference this year and what can people expect when they come out for oh the, my gosh I'm so excited fest? um so Idaho Cider Fest it's on October 5th from 12 to 6 p.m um and last year it was so much fun but it was super crowded I didn't expect nearly as many people as we had um so Freak Alley was just too dang small um so this year I am going bigger and better mm -hmm. um so I'm actually blocking off Bannock Street from 8th to 9th 
Yeah. Um, Pretty easy to do. To, just have them do some uh, construction on it. I, uh, <laughs> I know. It was close for so long. I, got, I should have I should have timed it better. Um, we're going to have 13 cideries present um, from five different states. Uh, we're going to have all local vendors. So I'm only using vendors from this block. So City Peanut Shop. Um, for food. Uh, for everything. So for everything. Shift Boutique is going to pull pull a um, tent out, and they're going to have some some of their wares out. Um, Lee's Candy, which just opened, is going to be there. City Peanut, um, and then all of the food is going to be provided by Nara Sushi and Funky Taco. Oh, um, so oh. it's just just this block. It's a block party. It's it's supporting the people that are surrounding that area. So it's like hyper hyper local in that sense um, because. If I'm going to shut the streets down in front of people, I want it to um, positively impact them. For sure. Um, and yeah, and uh, Boise Downtown Boise Association is bringing out their DT Plays um, cart, so that's got you know cornhole and mini golf and all sorts of fun games. Um, so yeah, it's going to be such a good time. I'm really excited. Um, what are the particulars for? Like, how much does it cost? Yeah. Uh, what time? When does it open? All that. Yeah. Stuff. So it's. Um, there's no tickets. You don't have to buy a ticket to come. Um, I want the barrier to, of entry to be really low for people. If you're just wandering by, um, going to Bitter Creek for dinner, I want you to be able to be like, well, what's going on? We'll be like, well, you can just buy a token, have yeah. one cider, then head over to dinner. dinner. Um, so tokens are only $3. Gets you a four ounce pour of any of the ciders um, that will be available. We'll also have 10 Barrel and Mad Swede, which are on the block. They're gonna be pouring their beers, so there's oh, some wow. beer options. It's just gonna be this big this big block party. $3 is the minimum amount you can pay. Um, we've got festival cups if you wanna buy those, or you can bring your own cup, um, or for 50 cents you can get like one of those disposable metal like ball yeah, or you can, can just cups. or you can just dig in your closet for exactly. your tree fork cup that you exactly. bought last five or years or any, anywhere else. Anything. Yeah, I did have... like. Uh, did you? You guys? I don't know if you were at Lost Grove's thing at the Botanical mm -hmm. Gardens. Were you guys Cheat there? Yeah. That was hilarious. Where they just had like yeah, a, table a table of cups. They literally went to the like yeah. the DI and bought. Yeah, <laughs> that was amazing. I yeah. thought, shout out to Jakey. That was super funny. Uh, good for you on that one. But this sounds great. So you don't even have to buy a cup. You just come, you spend, plunk down $3. Yep. Yeah. You grab yourself a nice four ounce pour. That's like six bucks for like a normal pour, right? Eight ounces, 12 ounces, mm -hmm. I guess. So, you know, somewhere like that. And it just, it sounds like a really like fun time. Yeah. Is it going to be like all day, all night? Uh, 12 to 6. 12 to 6. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I want it to be so accessible to people. Like, I feel like. Shit. A lot of the time, um, I'm like a hu huge lightweight, so a lot of um, festivals that are like, oh, pay $50 for a ticket. I'm like, I yeah. can't drink $50 for beer. <laughs> like, that will kill me. Um, so it's a hard it's a hard sell for me, and you always have to, like, buy it ahead of time or whatever. And this is just, like, one of those, like, just come drink as much as you want. Yeah. Ticket tokens are cheap. Like, mm -hmm. come enjoy the festivities. Come look at the vendor booths. Um, come learn about these cideries that are coming into town. Um, find your new favorite cider that you can buy at Albertsons. Um, and then just like keep going downtown. Have the rest of your day free to go yeah. do whatever you want. Um, so that's that's what I want to like cultivate. I want everybody to be able to be included. That sounds like a good time. And uh, I'm, I'm excited for that. So October 5th. Yes. Second annual Meriwether Cider Fest. Idaho Cider Fest. Idaho Cider Fest. Okay. <laughs> Idaho Cider Fest. Sorry. 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 And those... People up in Rathdrum. We do mean Idaho, not way up there in the Panhandle. I <laughs> know. God, what's my name? <laughs> <laughs> Only kidding, Rathdrum. Please don't parade in front of my house or anything else. Uh, I really enjoy being here today. It's been a lot of fun talking yeah. with you about everything and catching up. It's just always great to see you. I yeah, love seeing you. you. I seen Pretty you much know. everyone in your family. It's yeah. always just so Thank nice you. to see you guys. <laughs> And uh, I've always been a, such a fan of you guys. So really, really excited. I do have a couple questions left. And then I do, we play a game. I don't know if you've heard the podcast. We play a game with everybody. Okay. I, so, I listened to one of the episodes, but I'm not done with it because it was really long. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We go long. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think sorry I made it to that. the game part. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. And apologies to everyone out there for having to go through that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so I have one token left um, at this year's Cider Fest. Um, do you know who's going to be there? Who else is going to be oh, there? Oh, I know exactly so who's going to be there. So which cider should I try? Oh, one gosh. Oh, don't put that on me. Um, <laughs> I mean, it really depends. Uh, 
lucky for you and your love of Blackberry Boom, um, mm. I've got a list of the ciders that we're going to that everyone's going to be pouring, and um, it's very berry heavy. Um, Ooh, so there's going to be very, very um, Schilling ciders bringing their berry massive, which is their Imperial Berry cider. Um, Bauman cider out of Oregon is bringing um, all the berries. That's not what it's called. Um, Avid cider out of Bend is bringing or. Um, no, it's it's Blake's, but they're out of Bend as well. Um, is bringing their um, triple berry, so lots of berry, berry heavy, um, which is going to be awesome. There's also a lot of like um, fall ciders that are going to be. So um, we're going to have our and everything nice, which is our pumpkin spice, fall spiced cider. Um, Bend cider is bringing their um, chai cider. Shillings bringing it, their chider, so. It's gonna be it's gonna be very folly. Um, there'll be something for everyone. We've got dry ones, we've got sweet ones, we've got all everything in between. I mean, it's just gonna be a, a festival of all sorts of different flavors. You'll never get bored. Love it. And really quick, um, I have to be or not Fuji. Nice. Okay. Okay. Got that. I like it. That's, that's okay. And then I working on one Rosencrantz and Golden Delicious oh, are dead. Ravens, oh, Raven, Gravenstein. Gravenstein. Yeah. Perfect. Rosencrantz and Gravenstein. <laughs> I love that. There you go. Okay. All right. That's good. That's for all of our uh, all of our listeners that are into that sort of our thing. Shakespeare. Shakespeare. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, we haven't even talked about it. I'm almost done with it. What am I drinking? And it's delicious. Yay. Um, It's grumpy, stumpy, stumpy, grumpy, something grumpy, like that. Grumpy, scrumpy. Um, <laughs> so that <laughs> is scrumpy. our harvest um, time cider. We just came out with it at the beginning of the month. Um, it is... Uh, farm style, unfiltered. It's it's um, our base cider, and then fresh apple juice. The fresh apple juice that's fresh pressed, um, added on top, uh, mixed in. So it's just tastes like fresh pressed apple juice. It, it tastes does. like fall time. It tastes like being out in the apple orchard, like picking apples. I don't even think family. there's any alcohol in this. Um, it's, like, a it's a little more really sessionable. Good. It's it's five point two, so it's a little Super it's tasty. a little lower than our normal ones. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just supposed to be a celebration of fall. It's supposed grumpy, to be scrumpy. the the harvest season. Yeah, the grumpy, grumpy, scrumpy, scrumpy, scrumpy. Grumpy. Am I saying it right? Grumpy, scrumpy. Grumpy, scrumpy. Yep, nailed it. So good. <laughs> All right, so for those of you that have listened to the whole podcast before, you know that we like to do a game for the I end. Tried. <laughs> no, it's good. No, you believe me, it's not your fault. It's my fault, one hundred percent. I should not. I should not attempt to do anything over. These should all be thirty minutes. <laughs> but um, this game is called Apple or Pear. I have okay. a list of names here. They're either an apple or a pear, which are two ciders. There's, I don't think you guys have ever made a pear cider. We've, I'm not sure. we've never made a perry, no. Yeah, um, but I, I do know a decent amount of okay. about so pears. I, I just got just my certified to... pomalier this year. Oh, yeah? I'm the only pomalier in the state of Idaho. Pomalier. And pomalier is palm fruits, which are apples, pears, and quince. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And quince? And quince. How good is your quince knowledge? Not, if I would have known that, I would have brought great. some quince. No, that's... I. I yeah, quince are, quince are the uh, ugly stepchild of the palm family, for that sure. Could also be, now that I know quince, oh, that could also be a... Uh, we've made a quince cider. I mean, um, that could be a, a Shakespeare thing. You could put quince in almost anywhere, right? Yeah. Like, uh, there's so many so many possibilities now. Now oh, my yeah. brain is just broken. So anyway, we're going to play apple or pear. Okay. There are no losers on apple or pear. Oh, I, feel like, I feel like if I don't get everything right, I'm going to be sad. Well, yeah, but Here again, are. there are no losers on okay. apple or pear. This is a winner's only game. Okay. All right. The first two are just to get a baseline. Okay. 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 The first one, Bartlett. Apple. Bartlett. Oh, uh, Bartlett. Sorry. Pear. God. Now I'm, I'm not doing well. And this will be right after the edit. We'll pick up in three, two, one. <laughs> Red Delicious. Apple. <laughs> Apple. Okay. Okay. I've got, got, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. You get the game? I'm on it now, yes. All right. Hidden Rose. Oh, that's a red fleshed apple. Very good. Very good. Nashi. That sounds like a pear. It a is pear. a pear. Yeah. Okay. Mfi Dwarf. Um, that is an apple. Mm. No? Pear? pear. Umfi bit dwarf. Umfie I've never dwarf. heard of it. But there's a lot of dwarf apples, which is why it's It was so the funniest that. name I found. So yeah. Umfi. I just like saying that. Aternoia custard. I want to say apple. You're right, apple. Yeah, because there's a, there's a couple custard apples. Komichi. Komichi. Did you find a lot, are there a lot of Japanese 
apples and pears? They're mostly Japanese. I was just going to say. Um, pear? Pear is correct. Okay. Very good. You're doing very well on apple and pear. Thank you. Very well. <laughs> Thank you. Very, very impressed with this. Black diamond. Ooh. Black diamond. Um, apple? Apple. You are correct. Yay. Also, this might be a, a good way to go with the, at least look them up. Google black diamond. You yeah. Could, like, that could be your new blackberry boom. I'm just saying. They're purple. Oh, that's cool. fun. So these last two are, uh, this is a bonus round. Okay. These last two. Red Velox. Red Velox. Apple? Apple is correct. Yay. And then Red Blush. Red Blush is an apple. It's a pear. It's a pear. But there are no losers on apple right. or pear. You've done very well. Molly Ledbetter, thank you so much for thank having me up so here much. today. It's so great to see you. So awesome to talk Meriwether Cider for the last hour. And um, just so everyone knows, October 5th. Be there or be square for the second annual Idaho Cider Fest happening Absolutely. right out here. Molly's closing down the whole street. Again, not as hard of a task as you would think here in downtown Boise, as every street seems to be closed every <laughs> yeah. other week. So she's going to go ahead and I think maybe you might look out. They might close the street anyway. They might. Like They haven't closed this one in, what, maybe a year or so? It's been, oh, it's no. Been uh, oh, was it just two months? Two months? <laughs> so they'll probably have it closed again by October 5th. Uh, anyway, looking forward to the Cider Fest. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Coming up next on the show, we have Friday Night Pints where I will review whatever it is I tasted this week, including maybe this grumpy scrumpy, which is quite scrumpy, if I can say so myself. Anyway, I'm Steve Koontz. This is the Idaho Booze Podcast, and we will be back right after this. This show brought to you by Treasure Valley Chevron. Treasure Valley Chevron has the best selection of craft beer for your next adventure, from craft lagers to IPAs and even a nicely curated selection of local wines and ready-to-drink cocktails. Treasure Valley Chevron has everything you need for your next trip out of town. With locations on Highway 55 and Gowan Road, they are literally on the way to wherever you get out. Like jerky, Treasure Valley Chevron has the largest selection of jerky of any convenience store. Subscribe, share, and comment to this show, and we'll send you some. Just subscribe on Substack, share the show with a few friends, and comment on our Substack or Facebook page to enter to win a bunch of beef jerky from Treasure Valley Chevron. Welcome back to the Idaho Booze Podcast with me, Steve Koontz. It is time for Friday Night Pints. First up, we took a trip to Bear Island, went and saw Beth and company out there at the firehouse. We tried Bear Island's Imperial Hazy Collab with Crucible Brewing called Going Out with a Bang. This beer, the last beer that Crucible Brewing will ever brew. It's a nice looking beer, yellow hazy with a sticky white head, tropical fruit, citrus and lemon peel on the nose, passion fruit, pineapple, lemon, grapefruit all come through on the palate. Tastes really great. Awesome beer. That alcohol really doesn't kind of factor into it. It actually tastes like maybe like a six and a half, seven percent beer, but it is 8.2 and it's Crucible's last beer. So luckily they did go out with a bang because this one's a banger for sure. Cheers to them and to this collab with Bear Island. 8.2% on tap at Bear Island. Had another collab from Bear Island. This is the Dunkel called uh, Das Outlaw. And they did this with our friends at Payette. This one pours chocolate brown with a fluffy off-white head. Plenty of chocolate malt on the nose with a touch of black malt and grassy hops. Drinks like one of those old-timey chocolate drinks. You know what I'm talking about? With the seltzer in them. I can't remember for the life of me what they're called. But uh, chocolate malt or chocolate whip or I have no idea. Anyway, that's what it tasted like. Tasted a little dunkel. Found on tap at Bear Island and at Payette. This is 4.8%. Check that one out at Bear Island or Payette. Again, Das Outlaw. Nice name. Like what they did there. Went over to Barbarian and tried a couple of their new beers. One is a fresh hop beer, the Citra Maniac. This one is made with citra hops, fresh citra hops. Golden hazy color with a thick white head. Lime, grapefruit on the nose. Super ruby red grapefruit on the tongue. Hops really pop in this one. With that cattiness of the citra hop, not even, not even there. So it's a great job by them. Well done, Fresh Hop Hazy from our friends at Barbarian, 5.7%, 30 IBU on tap at both Barbarians. Also tried the Barbarian Phantasm Double Hazy IPA. Ooh, I like the Phantasm powder. It's like hop candy. Sweet lemon candy, grapefruit, tropical fruit on the nose with just a touch of white wine. Think like a soft Blanc. Lighter than you think on the palate. This tart lemon candy comes through with the grapefruit rind, sweeter white wine, and like there's like a tropical, some sort of tart, tropical fruit, maybe kiwi, 
is what I'm getting in there. Not a lot of booze on this one either for an 8.5% beer. Really nice beer. Well done. Found on tap at Barbarian. And then I happened to run into this place where they have Lost Grove's fake mustache on. This is their Oktoberfest. Amber in color with a sticky white head. Honey, lemon, and toasty grain on the nose. This one drinks nice and light with the honey and lemony hops popping on each sip. Flavor lingers just a bit on the back end, just like I like it. 6% found on tap at Tyner's Alley and other places around town. I got to assume both Lost Grove locations have this as well. So, nice little group of beers there for Friday Night Pints. We'll be right back to close out the show. This is the Idaho Booze Podcast. The show is brought to you by Like Button and LikeButton.us. You own a company and it just made a sale. Congratulations. But do you know how much money you spent to get that sale? Did that customer just walk in the door to escape the blazing heat? Or were they fed ads on their favorite mobile game, then on social media, then on Google, then on their streaming service before they decided to visit you? So how much did you spend to get that customer? At Like Button, we will not only set up a proven sales funnel that will generate leads, but with our unbeatable transparency, you will know exactly how much you spent to acquire that customer. Then, Like Button will optimize so the next customers you get come in cheaper so more money ends up in your pocket. Stop wasting money on ads that don't generate more money for you. Get back to doing what you love and let Like Button do the rest. Go to likebutton.us and sign up for a free consultation today. That's likebutton.us. Welcome back. Many thanks to Molly Ledbetter from Merriweather Cider for coming on and telling us all about her cidery. Be sure to check out the second annual Idaho Cider Fest going on next weekend in downtown Boise. Thanks to you, our listeners, everybody out there. Really appreciate you guys listening and sticking with the show. Uh, You know, we're doing it for you. So if you have anything to add, if you have any questions for me or anyone else, IdahoBoozePod at gmail.com. That's IdahoBoozePod at gmail.com. Enter to win that beef jerky box from Treasure Valley Chevron. Use the code for two for one Boise Beer Buddies cards. That code BoozePod. Or, uh, like I said, just hook us up with an email if you have anything else to say. That again, that email address again is IdahoBoozePod at gmail.com. Next week, we will be talking Hoptober Freshtival with Boise Brewing's Lance Chavez. And a bunch of other stuff. Lance has been in the game for a while now. So we're going to go over his past, sort of what he's done. We're going to talk a lot of Black Cliffs. So be prepared for that with Boise Brewing next week. Be sure to subscribe on Substack, Apple Pods, or Spotify to get that. And every episode delivered straight to you without any muss or fuss. This has been episode 13, Molly Merriweather of the Idaho Booze Podcast. Thanks again for listening. Good day and good drinking, everyone.